Today, I've got nine essential tips for early game progression and dominance in puzzles and survival. And the first mistake I made myself, which is to go and collect these quest rewards right over here. The first tip is to not collect these from this yellow arrow. And I'm going to explain why in just a second. First, allow me to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Amazon App Store. Using my link in the description of this video, you can gain access to the Amazon App Store where you can download puzzles and survival. Now, you may wonder, why would I want to do that? Well, what if I told you that through the Amazon App Store, you can make your in-game purchases at a discount? This is done by using Amazon Coins. Instead of just paying the full price, you can instead buy Amazon Coins at a discount. So for $100 worth of spend in-game, you could just spend 82 bucks. You save 18%. So if you are spending in mobile games, it's definitely worth checking to see if the game is in the Amazon App Store and if you could start saving immediately. I, this might sound crazy, but I literally spend thousands of dollars every month on mobile games because I'm a content creator for a number of games. But the point is that you actually can save a massive amount of money if you are spending either a lot or a little by using the Amazon App Store and Amazon Coins. Once again, the link is in the description to download Puzzles and Survival from the Amazon App Store and to get Amazon Coins. Doing so will support the channel. And a big thank you again to the Amazon App Store for sponsoring this video. I genuinely didn't know about Amazon App Store and specifically the Amazon Coins until they ultimately offered a sponsorship to me. And I'm already saving a bunch of money now on my in-app purchases which is incredible. So why is it that you don't want to collect these rewards? Look how many resources I have open. I am the most juicy target to go plunder resources from. Somebody could attack my city and take these resources, man. If, if my troops are out gathering and I'm asleep, I can't protect myself. I'm counting on my alliance to protect me. That's a separate tip. But you don't want to claim a ton of rewards from quests above and beyond your warehouse capacity when you don't need them because they can be stolen. And similarly, don't go into your bag and open up your tokens for resources. I swear, man, every time a new state opens, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of people opening all their tokens because they can and they don't know any better and they get plundered because they're noobs. Don't be a noob. Trust me on this one. Don't open all your tokens. If you've already opened them, it is what it is. Um, let's get to tip number two, which will hopefully help with this, which is that you should use your speed ups early on to power up. Now, I am aggressively using speed ups, and somehow I still have a ridiculous amount of research speeds and universal speed ups. Um, use your building and research speeds fast, early, to gain a lot of power. Now, you may want to wait until you've been helped the maximum number of times. You can check that by smashing those little hands on the right-hand side of the screen, It'll show you how much you've been helped. I can help everybody else. And this is really important. Yeah, I mean, every time I build something right now, I save 20 minutes. Or every time I do research, I save 20 minutes. And that might not seem like a lot, but you're going to make dozens and dozens and dozens of upgrades, which ultimately does add up. But you want to use your speed ups to power up because you don't want to sandbag your power in the early game. There are a number of events that are going to give you rewards for powering up. And you can only get into a good alliance if you are higher power. And this brings me to tip number three. Get into the best possible alliance you can get yourself into. Uh, that does not necessarily mean the highest power alliance, but a well-organized top three alliance will be absolutely life-changing for your progression, if for no other reason than getting helps faster so that then you can use your speed-ups if you have any left. You shouldn't because you've been using them. And some people may say, oh, save them for this event or that event. Maybe. Maybe save a few if you want. But I think that having power at the start of the game is essential. And this brings me to tip number four. If you want to get more power, consider the $5 it takes or spending some gems uh, to get the extra building queue. You can see I have two building queues. Absolutely freaking crucial, man. It's crucial. I mean, twice as much building. That's like a ton of free building speed ups. Like if you were going to spend money on building speed ups, stop. Get your second hammer first. That's like free speed ups, right? Then if you're going to spend on building speed ups, fine. But like hammer first, baby. Get the building queue. Speaking of queues, I've got the training queues up on the screen. And you may not realize this, but you actually can upgrade 
from lower tiers of troops to higher tiers of troops. And this is something you should be doing. Tip number five. It's a huge mistake to not upgrade low tier to high tier because at some point you will have so many troops that if your city is attacked, your infirmary could overflow. So to upgrade from lower tier to high tier, um, you need to not be in the middle of training like I am right now. And there'll be a little arrow, okay, in the upper right of that profile. So if I had T4s in my city and I wanted to upgrade them to T5, I'd tap that little arrow. You'll, you'd will you see it just in the upper right of this guy's head over here, okay? Um, and that is how you go and do that. It takes a fraction of the time to upgrade from low tier to high tier um, as it does to train new. And ultimately, you are protecting yourself from that situation of having so many troops that your infirmary ultimately overflows. Plus, your march capacity in this game is limited. That is determined based off of your headquarters and other things. Um, you can see over here, troop size. Well, the more troops you have, at some point, you will exceed this, this limit of troops. And if you want to have more punch, you got to have higher tiers of troops. So upgrading is really worth. Now, this brings me to, I guess we got to start calling these mistakes. This is like mistake number six. Huge mistake is to not use your energy. There's two forms of energy in the upper left here. The pills and also the lightning bolts. Now, those aren't actually pills. I think they're soda cans. Uh, stamina and AP. How about we use the actual names? Stamina is what you use to fight zombies. You go to the world map. You can search for zombies, um, which, like, here's a level 7 nurse. Don't want to tango with her if you're at the very first moments of the game, but very quickly she'll be easy to beat. Um, and that uses your energy over here. Also, there are uh, zombie layers that you can rally with your alliance. Yet another reason to be in a good alliance. You want to spend this energy. The rewards are too good to pass up on. You don't want to cap out on this energy. You want to spend it down quickly so that... Even if you go to bed overnight, it's all regenerating and working in your favor, right? The same is true of the other form of energy, the AP. So that stamina is what I just showed you how to spend. The AP, you actually spend in the campaign. The campaign is right over here. And if you were in a hurry, you could even do a, a mission you've already completed over again by using the blitz function. You get some amount of blitz tokens every day, I think by virtue of doing quests, and boom, when I use a Blitz token, it just gives you rewards as if you just manually played the mission. Now, as of right now, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't use these Blitz tokens if you're low on time and can't actually progress through the campaign, but you're about to cap out on your energy here, or I guess I should say AP. So if you're on the verge of capping on AP especially, use those Blitz tokens and never let those bars actually max out if you can avoid it. It's just free value. Um, so get it, claim it, it's yours, take it! Number seven, <laughs> um, don't have any idle cues, okay? Or If you're gonna go away from the game for a while, like go to bed, this is a general wargaming tip, not specific to this game, but definitely applies here. But like I save big research for when I'm gonna be away from the game for a while. So for example, I'm gonna get this March queue tonight when I go to bed. It takes 16 hours of research, bro, that's a long time. So what am I gonna do uh, sometime in the evening? I'm going to queue this up, and then I'm not going to worry about missing out on research time overnight. I mean, not that I was actually worried. I'm just saying, like, this queue will be fu fully utilized all throughout the evening because I am going and I'm unlocking this. Now, you could make the argument you should unlock this extra march queue, this particular form of research, sooner um, because it gives you another march that you can have outside your city. But I actually don't have enough troops at this moment in time. Um, to fill another march, even for gathering. Like, it's just so early in, in the game right now. Maybe I should use some troop speed-ups to do that, but uh, you get the idea. Run along research overnight. Make sure that you train your troops overnight. Don't upgrade overnight, because that's fast. You want to do, like, the full train new troops overnight, because otherwise you're going to have some number of hours where the queue is not doing anything. It's like free speed-ups, sort of, or wasted time. If you have this not running for long amounts of time. One way you can make that better, and I need to do more of this, is to upgrade and make more boot camps. Boot camps increase your total training cap and also make it so that you train faster. It's pretty cool. So get more troops, make boot camps, and run that overnight. Which brings me to tip number eight. I feel like I might have lost count somewhere in the middle there. Tip number eight is that if you can get five-star heroes for progression, they are honestly god-tier. I was actually shocked 
at how much progression I was getting. Even when the five star was unleveled compared to my leveled out three star, it did better. And then ultimately I decided to switch things over and, um, you know, use this line. These five stars are freaking amazing, man. I mean, for like the five or 10 bucks it takes to unlock each of these, if you think you're going to be playing the game for a while, my God, man. I mean, it's just night and day, the kind of progression I got from five stars. Now, you can get them eventually, right? Free to play. Um, there's ways to go and do that. But getting these early just dramatically increased my power, dramatically increased my ability to do campaign. And I'm definitely having a lot of fun with this particular combination of five stars. Of course, those are the only ones I have. So I'm sure there's better combos out there. And the ninth tip I have for you, I, I really struggle with decision paralysis at times in games like this because I don't want to make irreversible mistakes. And I was worried at the start of the game that if I invested in a commander, a, a hero, I should say, like Doc Gray, like he's one of the first ones you get. Is he really worth investing in? Well, you can tap that button in the upper right. It's a reset button. And yeah, it does cost gems, but if you need it, you can reset the hero and then deploy the resources elsewhere. Now, obviously, these Doc uh, Gray fragments will remain Doc Gray fragments. However, uh, I get back all the anti-serum, which is absolutely crucial, and my books over here, the combat manuals, which are important for doing upgrades. And I did that once already, and I'm probably going to do that again because I'm going to get a five-star yellow. Uh, dude, I'm loving using the five stars. Ultimately, I think if you follow these tips, you're going to get a much better start than I did. And I honestly had a pretty solid start, and I did do some spending. However, I saved all my purchases by using Amazon coins. It honestly feels a little bit like cheating. Like, I didn't know Amazon coins were a thing, and how many people have I been playing these mobile games against that were using Amazon coins to get a discount? Man, I don't know. But if you want to start saving on purchases you make in mobile games, if you make any, no, absolutely no pressure. And I'll just mention at the tail end of this video, I, I should say normally if I'm making a spending related video, um, you know, I'll advise that you prioritize your family saving for retirement and all these other things that are really, really important and actually get you life value. Prioritize that. But if you do spend, I'll remind you, the link is in the description. You can use Amazon Coins. You can get a discount on your in-app purchases. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. Throw a like on here if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more puzzles and survival, which I'm finding the puzzles portion strangely addicting. And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.